Welcome to the broadcast. Uh, we're joined now by former mayoral candidate, Green Party candidate, former supervisor and attorney, Matt Gonzalez. Thank you for being it's back with us. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, last time you were here, I may have mentioned it to you, and I, we were talking about it just before we went on. I did host the debates between you and, 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 and Gavin Newsom, and uh, it's, a, it's a remarkable how that campaign draw a lot out of you because you look totally different than the person I interviewed. How, how, how are you doing now in terms of the political passion, your political passions that made you run, and what do you do with them now? Well, I, I, I don't think that political activity is limited to electoral politics. And so I'm still engaged in trying to affect ideas. I've published opinion editorials, um, and I've spoken at, you know, when I get invited, uh, everything from graduation ceremonies to, to other things. I just spoke at the uh, police studies school at San Jose State. Okay. I published an op-ed in talk the about Davis there? Enterprise. <laughs> what did you talk about there? Well, uh, it, was, it was a tough crowd, you know, because it's primarily people going into law enforcement. And I try to convey a message as someone that's worked in the courts mm -hmm. that, um, that uh, no, no matter how much there might be the lure to do what the bad guys do, you really have a responsibility to obey the law. And that in our system of justice, the guilty going free is part of what keeps us all free, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a hard I, message, and I, I but, agree with yeah. you. I think there is a tendency uh, to, to match your enemy in war. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, many have said that by the end of the World War II, America became very much like the Germans in terms of technology, tactics, strategy. It's a, it's a tendency. Mm -hmm. So I, I won't totally disagree with that. But, you know, that actually, that kind of brings me to where I wanted to go is the fact that you've got to be kind of proud that the Green Party, with all your 14,000 members, uh, seem to dominate city politics as a theme goes, as a mythology or as an ideology. I mean, everywhere you turn, whether it's the housing policy, bicycle first policy, or what transportation policy, the Democratic Party is not leading in terms of ideas of policy. It's the Green Party that influences not only the board, but Mayor Gavin Newsom. I mean, how, how do you view it? You've got to, you can't not see that. Well, what I'm proud of is having run a campaign that was uh, unapologetic about uh, progressive ideas, and I think that that's that's uh, something to be proud of. I mean, we went out there and we argued for things, and if people didn't like them, that's fine, vote against us. But there wasn't any trickery involved. We weren't trying to say, "Oh, I'm really going to do this," but I'm, you know, here's the here's the real plan. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was refreshing. I think there were people who maybe disagreed with me who were willing to say, "Well, so know. how is Mayor Gavin Newsom then different than a Ma Mayor Matt Gonzalez in terms of those policies?" Well, I think, it, I think it's hard to say. I mean, it's a little bit of speculative history, but I do think that uh, there's some pretty obvious differences. I think I would have not uh, vetoed some of the, the recent tenant measures that are trying to create protections against the Ellis Act and things like that. I think I would have uh, allowed the Saturday closure of JFK Drive to go. I think that that's a pretty obvious one. And I have found that his arguments are um, pretty transparent. But I mean, th those are really minor issues. Even the mm -hmm. Ellis Act uh, augmentation, in my opinion, from the, what the Ellis Act does, what uh, what we were talking about there is is, is window dressing. Well, I, it does protect those who are disabled. It does protect those who are, are victims of that. But it, the, the the bigger issues, I think, are the ones that I don't think are well, that different than yours. Well, one thing, Arthur, that I was arguing during the campaign was I was arguing that if you're going to have money to improve things that you want to spend money on, I mean, if you're going to improve the streets, for instance, and you're going to avoid going to the voters for bond money, then you have to make the hard choices about making government smaller. Um, Newsom's administration got a lot of accolades for uh, taking, like, let's say, overtime spending that Willie Brown had gone from 50 million a year to 99 million, and Newsom was at 90 million, and everyone said, hooray, look how great this is. Well, recently they're estimating that overtime is going to be at 122 million, and I don't see anybody criticizing his administration. Well, his own base, though, I mean, what about the whole, uh, you're, you're, are you telling me that you would have shrunk city government? Are you really trying to tell uh, me uh, that? Ar Arthur, or if just you, shrunk overtime? Ar Arthur, if you followed my campaign for mayor, one of the major reasons why the labor unions uh, the majority of unions were not supportive of my candidacy. Was because oh, not they didn't. That's right. They didn't like the message.
because I'm the gonna message ask you again, was, do you, are you yeah. telling me that if you were mayor, you would have actually made a commitment to shrinking city government? I mean, it, 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 would that have been possible yes. to begin with? Yes, it is. You're talking about a payroll of over $2 billion. Now, the Chronicle can write stories saying what a great job Newsom is doing in that regard, but you know what? He's cut that city payroll by less than a quarter of 1%. I mean, it really is embarrassing when you consider the growth that was happening under Willie Brown was something like 15% of the workforce increased. We haven't had, uh, you know, I mean, the, the population hasn't even increased 5%. It's decreased, it's decreased by 30, 40,000 yeah. people since the dot com, uh, but since yeah. the year 2000. But I mean, one, uh, of, the, one of the things are. That's that not I, a green philosophy sure to shrink is. government. No, sure it is. Where it's about responsible government and it's about trying to say some of the democratic ideas that people are used to we need to let go of, and we need to be fiscally responsible if we're going to win voters. Yeah, I, oh, I see. Okay. But uh, ha has that happened anywhere where the Green Party has been in power in this world? In this world. Um, in the United States, we have primarily had uh, mayors in smaller towns. You know, we have not uh, had our big breakthrough, so to speak. So uh, I understand that remains that. to be seen. Well, the, the fact is that I believe the mayor is actually proposing an increase in the workforce, city government, and, and actually antagonize some of the business community because he announced it, and I think it was in the paper as well. All right, now, but again, for me, I think that's important, you know, as a fiscal conservative. I appreciate that. I mm -hmm. find it hard to believe. I don't remember, and maybe I wasn't following carefully enough. Uh, I, tr I trust that you're a person who keeps their word, and if that's the case, then there's a major difference between what's going on now. But, 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 but Arthur, I was on two finance committees and I made a lot of budgetary decisions. You go back and you ask any of the principals there, Harvey Rose and others, they'll tell you I was a solid fiscal conservative, always voting to make government smaller, making hard decisions and, you know, on the hunt to go after uh, that kind of waste. And okay. so I, I, it's something I'm proud right. of. Let's yeah. go now to what I consider the the polarizing and core issue right now among city insiders and also influences the city most, and that's a whole housing policy. Mm -hmm. In the uh, 90s and earlier, it was an office building policy that led to Prop M restricting the number of units, uh, square feet that we built. Now we have this battle. I want to know what Matt Gonzalez thinks about this problem of two different visions of the city. One where there's a lot of wealthy construction construction for the wealthy, high-rise condominiums that are often bought in fractional interest. People don't buy their apartment. Mm -hmm. They buy one-sixth of it so they can vacation here. So you have a one phenomenon. Plus you have people who have been trying to preserve the existing stock for those who are artists, those who are poor, and feel like they're going to be run out of the city if they don't just completely stop it. I mean moratorium as they've done, a successful moratorium. How do you sit in the middle of that major battle? Well, I, I think I probably agree with Newsom to the extent that I think you need to build housing in all income categories. Uh, the primary difference is I would be focusing on the lower income brackets uh, to the extent that we're pricing out the people that we've traditionally said help define what the city is. Um, personally, I don't support this idea of the Manhattanization of San Francisco. I don't think it's realistic or given... Or the Vancouverization. Yeah, and, and I don't think it's realistic given the level of complaints that we have about city services. I mean, we're cutting bus lines, we're, we're not taking care of our parks, there are a lot of things, you know, the public schools have issues. That's not the time when you're trying to bring more and more people. But don't those uh, high-rise, uh, like Rincon Towers, they're going to bring in a lot of tax money as well. Well, let's... Uh, which has kept this... Let, 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 let's, let's see where it's spent. Okay, yeah. well, where it's spent is different, but I mean, then you would oppose, for example, now they've just proposed a huge tower at the Trans Bay Terminal. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, maybe the highest in the West Coast. You oppose that kind of project? Uh, let me just say this. When I, when I read about it, I kind of shake my head and I say, it doesn't seem like a good idea to me. I'd like to, you know, I'm open to persuasion, but my initial instinct is this isn't the way uh, to take the city. So then, in a way... And, and some of my progressive colleagues disagree with that. They, they, as far as the Trans Bay Terrible. Some of them, yeah. Well, I, I think that's... I, I'm, I'm going to prepare an article to call it where green meets concrete there mm -hmm. because all of a sudden now... Uh, the green advocates will allow that tower, but not other towers because it's a mm. transportation hub. But in general, then you would stand more with, which I call the conservatives of San Francisco, those who are trying to conserve the existing stock versus those who are trying to change it. Well, I think one of the biggest arguments we've had about uh, housing is whether or not we're going to allow the conversion 
of rental units that are subject to rent control. Different issue. And, yeah, but it, it's an important issue because it's about whether or not you're preserving your current stock. And I, in, in that way, we would probably agree on that uh, in that area. But as far as all this raw land uh, on the in the eastern part mm -hmm. of San Francisco, pure outright underutilized land that's vacant or empty, you would also object to uh, market rate housing there if it would increase the tax base and allow developers to, and they do inclusionary housing that is a certain portion would have to be built for affordable housing? Well, you know, Arthur, the, the, the first thing that's very important to, to establish is that the amount of affordability that we're demanding is too low. And so it's actually not resulting in uh, sufficient levels of what affordable level housing. What level would you be building. happy with? Uh, I think it's got to be at least 20 percent affordability. Well, that's and I And I don't like the idea of allowing all of it to be off-site. And then I don't like the idea that people who income qualify once they get the unit, can in a very short amount of time turn it around and sell it to someone who doesn't income qualify. And so okay. this kind of public policy interest in creating affordability disappears within five years. You know, uh, we only have a few minutes left. I do, I asked you this before, I, and I asked you at the start of the program about political passion. Obviously, I'm developing and now having doing this, done this program, uh, I'm, I'm developing, you know, my need to get involved. What do you do with that? Well, I, you are still knowledge about these issues. You pulled off one of the closest races uh, with a, six, a huge disadvantage in, in many ways. Why aren't you involved in politics? Well, I, I think I am involved. I mean, I'm, I'm still hosting fundraisers for political candidates. I've held fundraisers for Amy Allison running for Oakland City Council as a Green, John Russo as a Democrat running for the Assembly in the East Bay. Uh, I, I'm certainly supportive of Ross Mercurimi, uh, the Green, who's currently in the seat. Uh, but that's not, that, a lot of people do that. A lot of yeah. fundraisers, very wealthy people do that. They host a lot of fundraisers from my background. When, when are you going to take that energy and your knowledge and, and get back in the middle of this? The, I can't believe that you've retired from politics, well, I, I, elected I, I, I politics. Don't, I, don't know, I don't know what the answer is to that, but I know that I'm practicing law right now and we're engaged in good lawsuits. No doubt. We've got a lawsuit against the local hotel for not paying the minimum wage, against the Sacramento police for using tasers and killing people with them. Uh, it's a one, it's yeah. a quiet, wonderful world to be an activist attorney like you are, and you definitely, uh, as a Republican, I have so, total dismay as how successful you can be mm -hmm. through the courts uh, quietly. But are you going to return to elected office? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's uh, politics is very specific as to time and place. There's a political race, and the political landscape shifts all the time. Do you need to be back in elected no, office? No, I don't. I, I, I don't need that. I don't, I, winning a political race doesn't Not change winning. what I think about myself. To be in that position to get things done. Well, you've got to win to be in that position. Absolutely, so. but you would win, I'm sure, if you, ch if you well, chose I've to. Well, I've run three times and only won once. Okay, Matt Gonzalez, we'll wait and see. And uh, thank you for being on the program. It's a pleasure. And uh, stay with us. We'll be right back.